Hey guys, and welcome to the deck profile for the Constellar Rank 5 Pleiades Spammerific Deck of Spamness. So, as you guys know, Constellars will not be on the daily dual lineup anymore after the update, which will be tomorrow. So, I just wanted to do this deck profile before, you know, uh, the deck is completely removed. So, I'm going to go through the deck, tell you guys why certain cards were played, and why... This probably isn't the most optimal Constellar deck that you can play. So, first we got, of course, three Kos. Kos is the leader of the deck. He makes uh, cards... Basically, he makes level five. So you don't go any lower than that. Uh, maybe you'll make a shared ten of four, but, you know, this guy's just for fives, you know. Um, it's a real easy play. Uh, it's kind of a tricky play. You know, you go Pollux, Kos, five, five, XC. Or you can go like uh, special summon solar wind jam or summon call make it five uh, ghost ship insta feed. It's it's a, a whole bunch of ways you can do it, and that's why this deck is the rank five spam. So yes, three costs. You also got three Pollux. Pollux is uh, definitely a guy that you need to run. He gives you that additional normal summon. Uh, he cannot be veilered, um, so he pretty much can't be stopped. If your opponent wants to like drop a max C on you. It pretty much just be zeroing out because you go Pollux, Normal Summon Calls, XC into Pleiades. So, you know, they use one card to draw one card so they zero out. So if they want to go ahead and do that, sure, go ahead. Um, so definitely you need to run three Pollux. Uh, some people don't run three, but I do. I run Triple Algaide. People don't like to run Algaide because it's susceptible to getting max seed and it's also susceptible to getting Veilard. You know what? I can't stop that. I can't control it, you know? Me running less on Gaidi doesn't make my opponent less run, it, run any less Maxis or Veiler. So, if it's gonna get Maxis or it's gonna get Veiler, that's fine. There's not enough good Constellar monsters to not be running Al Gaidi at 3. I, that's how I feel, you know? Because when Al Gaidi goes off, it's essentially a Pollux, you know? Sometimes you just gotta go normal summon Al Gaidi. Is that okay? Special summon Cost. Is that okay? Both 5. Make into a Pleiades, so. Uh, definitely, you gotta run Al Gaidi. There's no choice. There's no if and buts about it. Run Al Gaidi. All right. Don't even hesitate. Cause you know what? You're gonna get Veilard anyway. You're gonna get Max Seed anyway. So you might as well just get it over with. That's how I feel. Then you run Triple Sombre. Of course, you run Sombre. He is uh, the basically a one card XC. Uh, you know, you summon Sombre. You banish a Constellar, add a Constellar. Then you get an additional normal summon. But then uh, summon a card and go for it to see. So if you got like Pollux and Calls in the graveyard, summon Sombre, banish the Pollux, get back the Calls, Sombre, get an additional normal summon, summon the Calls, both five, and make another plea. So basically a one card to see. Definitely a good card, as you could tell by its price, $17, pretty expensive. So if you guys are uh, thinking about making some Constellars, you know, you gotta pick up Triple Sombre, and you know, he's a pretty price, so uh, good luck with that. And uh, Double Sheraton. I was running it at 3, but then I felt that it was getting kind of, you know, cloggy. Um, you know, I was drawing multiple Sheratons when I didn't need Sheraton at the time. I've been testing it at 2, it's been working perfectly fine. Um, especially in this deck that, you know, doesn't have to rely on uh, Castellars and can do other things. Um, you know, you can make a Pleiades by doing a Ghost Ship in a Solar Wind Gem or a Solar Wind Gem or an Institution. So, you don't always need the Constellars, so uh, Sheraton can be a bad draw. Um, you know, it costs you your normal summon, and he's only level 3, he only has 700 attack, but, um, I'm not saying you should not run Sheraton at all, Sheraton is awesome, you know, um, you know, he's pretty much the stratus of your deck, but, uh, he can get a little bit cloggy, and, uh, I've been testing it at 2, I like it at 2, so, there you go, 2. Tell me how many Sheratons you guys run in your Constellar deck, if you run a Constellar deck. Uh, now we have Triple Ghost Ship. Uh, Ghost Ship, like I said, this is a rank 5 spam deck. You pretty much just spam the hell out of Pleiades, get them as, as soon as possible, as quick as possible, whip them out. So, with this, it's kind of like a later game uh, way to do it, because uh, it can't be normal summon or set. You must be special summoned by your hand by banishing one light in your graveyard, so, you know, later in the game, when you have a whole bunch of lights in your graveyard, like an extra Sheraton or something, you just banish it and summon a uh, level 5, and just, you know, make it much easier to go for Pleiades or other rank 5s, but, yes, definitely, Ghost Ship has helped me plenty of times. Uh, Triple Solar Wind Jammer. Solar Wind Jammer, when you control no monsters, you can special summon this card, and its attack and defense become half, but who cares? Because it's basically level 5, and that's really all that you care about. So, you just go, BAM! 
Like, as soon as you have no cards on your just go BAM! Special Summon Solo in general, level 5. Then you can go Summon Calls, make it level 5. You can Banish a Light, Summon Go Ship, make it, and that'll be level 5. You can go Insta Fusion for a Jama Knight, and that'll be level 5. So there's plenty of plenty of ways just to make a whole bunch of level 5. So, um, that's the way that this deck works. Just rank 5 spam. One Bear. Bear is pretty good. Bear throws the chair. He gets you out of sticky situations. He can get you that tanky when you need it. Um, you know, if I was if I was gonna change something about this deck, that uh, you know, some people might decide otherwise, it'd be to take out Bear and run a third Sheraton if you want to do that. But uh, Bear's really good. He can throw the tanky. He can uh, search you for the tanky for the calls. Uh, you know, I like it. It gets you out of hairy situations. Uh, there's been a handful of times where I'll be dueling with the Constellar deck and people will drop a Flying Sea on me. And, uh, and they'll be like, oh, ha, ha, I got you. And he'd be like, oh, really? Because I summoned Bear and I throw the chair at the Flying Sea. And they'll be like, oh, no, yay, I'm out of it, you know? So, definitely like the Bear. Um, you could pick him up for cheap. He was in the 10, so, you know. I believe that $9 price is maybe the Ultra Rare or something. I don't believe that's the 10 version. I don't think so. So, yeah, I think the 10 version is only like 50 cents to a dollar, so... Um, you know, pick them up at your local card shop, and just pick one up and put them in, plop them in your Constellar deck. And, of course, Honest. Look at all the lights, you know, almost everybody's lights except for Bear, so. You play the Honest, you drop it on your opponent, they get salty, and you know what? Hey, at least I only got one, you know? It's not like I'm Blacklings and I can drop a triple clue on your ass and you just cry, so. Uh, you know, it's a one-time thing. Although, M7's kind of a dick, since he can put it back in your hand, but yeah, that's another story, that's another story. So, as are the monsters. Now we move on to the spells. So, of course, we got our Dark Hole and our Book of Moon. Oh, let me move that. Dark Hole, Book of Moon, those are our two spell staples. Um, you know, uh, Heavy Storm and Monster Reborn and such like that are banned, so we need to run these two. They are really good, and I'm glad that uh, Book of Moon is starting to get some more attention, because I think it's a really good card, and, you know, uh, now people are starting to play a lot of traps done in Road of Creep, but Book of Moon is just like, ha ha ha, I bet you didn't see that coming. You run. One Rota. One Rota. And you know what? There's only one warrior in this deck. But you know what? The warrior is so good that he's worth the Rota. And that is Pollux, you know? You need to get your Pollux as soon as possible for some plays. So you Rota it up. One Rota. Three warriors. Pollux it up. And you run two Tanky. Tanky went down two. Didn't hurt that bad. It hurt a little bit, but it's fine. Um, for those of you who like to play Pudded Wallachy in your Constellar decks, you know, that's a three. Uh, so you can go ahead and run that, but uh, what Beast Warriors you have, Beast Warriors that you have, are Kals, the leader of the deck, so you definitely want to run it for him, and Bear. Now, if you don't even run Bear, and you just run Triple Kals, I still say run two tankies, because like I said, Kals is the leader of the deck. You need to get him as soon as possible to be able to go into your uh, Ring 5 plays when you don't have the others, you know? Even when you're just running a regular Constellar deck without the Rank 5 spam and the Solar Wind Jammer and the Ghost Ship uh, and the Insta Fusion, you know. I definitely recommend running Double Tanky. You know, if it's a dead draw, it's a dead draw. Um, you know, make Bear a little bit more useful, you know. So you got four targets for two Tankies. Um, I mean, the chances of you dead drawing it are slim, and if, if it is, you can always get Bear to throw the chair at some monster, so not bad. And you run triple Instafusion. Instafusion is for Ojamanite. Ojamanite is a level 5 light that will allow you to make Pleiades. Because Pleiades doesn't say uh, two level 5 Constellar monsters. No, it says two level 5 light. So uh, there you go. Just activate Instafusion, pay your 1,000, and drop an Ojamanite. It makes you select one card zone on Dev Pro. So I just select one and I don't select the other one. It's kind of stupid because he's going away anyway. And if he wasn't, he'd be destroyed by uh, Instafusion. So it's not like I can be like, Aha, oh, Instafusion summoned a Drama Knight. Now he's on the field. He's 25D. And all oh, two of your zones are gone. No, because he wasn't summoned properly. And Instafusion just makes him go away. But hey, serves the purpose of Instafusion summoning a level 5 light with ease. So there you go. And I like Triple Lance. Triple Lance, I like it. Uh, blocks cards that get in my way. Um, you know, those pesky dark holes that I'm constantly getting, I, you know, I definitely hate that, you know, when I go first turn Pleiades and I go dark hole, it's just like, oh my god, this, see, this is why I run triple ants. Uh, also blocks you from cards like Compulse and Bottomless and Torrental and Deep Prison and Mirror Force, and it's just a really great card, so, um, if you don't, if you're not running Lance, I definitely recommend that you run it this format, because it can protect you. And now we go into the trap, so, Compulse, it's at one. 
play it. It's a good card. You know, despite me having pleased, Impulse is still a good card. Bottomless, that one, still a good card. Play it. Sun the Morning, still at one. Play it. It's a good card. Torrental, still at one. Good card. Play it. And the card that you guys have definitely recommended for me that I fell in love with again. Oh my god, love this card so much, so much, so much. Has won me plenty of duels. Just, oh my god, yes, Trap Stun. Yes, Trap Stun. I got the hate. So I got that Lance and that Trap Stun. It's so good. Especially in this deck, you know, with your opponents just anticipating your plays. Uh, you know, you know, they kill your pleadies and maybe they're stacking up back row to take out. They know you're probably eventually going to get a Sombre. So they're probably stacking up back row, like, a, you know, a fiendish chain or like a bottomless to stop your Sombre. You know, start your turn, draw, activate the trap stun. Is that okay? Oh yeah, that's fun. Now Sombre, go, you know? So, uh, trap stun definitely helps. It can stop those pesky traps that can get in your way. I like it much more than MST at this current moment. Cause current uh, MST, you know, you're kind of like, if they set five back row or four back row, you know, you're kind of like blind MSTing. Maybe you hit something good, maybe you don't. Well, Trap Stun, Trap Stun can just lock it down for this turn. Maybe you can drop like an Omega. Maybe you can drop like a Tyrus and pop the back row. You know, it's all good. It's all good. You know, Heavy Storm is gone here, but, you know, Trap Stun is here. It's at three. Play it. And you know what? If your opponent wants to Dark Bribe your Trap Stun, that just shows signs of weakness where, you know, it, they're pretty much screaming, like, if you trap stun me, I will lose. So, you know, I, I will gladly draw for your, you know, your neg. So, that's how it gets done. And that's pretty much the deck. Um, it was a pretty good deck. I really enjoyed it. It was in the lineup from the beginning, and it served a lot. But, you know, I pretty much got the gist of it. Also, I have a Constellar deck in real life. So, it's not like I really, if I ever want to deal with Constellas, I could just use it in real life. So, duh. And, no, I'm not going to be showing you my real-life Constellar deck. No, 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 no. That one's just too... Mmm, I like that deck. <laughs> it's evil, but I like it. Alright, so I'm going to go to the extra deck. So, of course, this is a rank 5 spam deck, so you got to spam the guy that you're supposed to be spamming the most. Three Pleades. Like I said, see, two level 5 lights. Um, He's mean. He's a Compulse. Compulse, arguably one of the most powerful trap in all of Yu-Gi-Oh, especially last format, you know. It went down to one for a reason, but police is still here, so once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach a card to, you know, bounce a card on the field back to the hand. So you can bounce your opponent's cards, you can bounce your cards, you can, you know, bounce, 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 bounce. Um, he's has the tag barrier of 25, and he's just a dick, so, uh, you know, without Pleiades, this deck would be nothing, so definitely you gotta run him. Uh, one M7, M7 went down to one, but I only played one anyway. Um... You overlay him on any Constellar monster. Uh, he can't use his effect to turn that he summoned, but his effect is uh, you detach a material, then you uh, target one XC material mon monster. I mean, you target one monster on the field or in either player's graveyard and you turn it back to the hand. So you can use him seven to bounce one of your opponent's monsters. Can't bounce back row like Pleiades. Um, I've, made, I've accidentally made that mistake at uh, Worlds. Where I attempted to, you know, use M7 to bounce a back row, and the judge was like, nope, can't do that. I'm like, oh yeah, my bad, I forgot. Um, but you can uh, use M7 to, you know, put a card from your graveyard back into your hand. So if you used your Honest, you can put your Honest back. If you used your Sombre, put your Sombre back. You know, it's just M7's an awesome card, and it can be laid, overlaid on any Constellar. So if you play uh, that rank 3 high Hydatus or something, whatever his name is. You can just go Sheraton, Sheraton, Nika Hyadis, or whatever his name is, and then just go bam, M7, 27 beer. So, not bad, not bad. Uh, he didn't go down to one because of Constellars, he went down to one because of other decks. Uh, I think it was like Gishkis and stuff, just looping him, so it's fine. I only played one anyway, so I'm not really concerned about that. Uh, we got two oh, Omegas. Omega is awesome. During either player's turn, you can detach an Eximetro, and all Constellar monsters you currently control are unaffected by spells and traps this till the end of this turn. Um, you know, it's pretty much um, Constellar's Infestation Pandemic. Uh, I would rather prefer Constellar's have it in the form of a spell card like Infestation Pandemic, but Omega is still good, too. He is 24, not exactly the attack bearer, but hey, if you got a tanky, then he goes to 25, because he is a beast warrior, so, not a bad play, I like to run two, some people run one, but I'm just like, nah, I like two, there's been plenty of games where I just won because I had two Omegas instead of just one, if I had one, I probably would have lost, so, uh, I like Omega just the way he is, I run, and this is my personal choice in tech, I run two 
guy chargers. And the reason why I run two guy chargers is because I've run plenty of duels with two guy chargers. I know there's been plenty of duels when before I got my second guy charger. There's been plenty of duels where I've lost because I didn't have that guy charger. One particular duel, I blew up with Vulcan. I already used my guy charger. I summoned my Vulcan source. I blew it his up his card. He had exactly 26 life points left. Nothing on the field. His field was clear. All I had to do was have a second gun charger, drop it, and attack for game. Didn't have it. I didn't have a second one at the time. I didn't think about running it. And he turned the whole game around on me, and I lost that duel. And, you know, it was like, oh, if only I had two gun chargers. So now I'm running two. I definitely like that, too. Um, you know, he's definitely been uh, very helpful. And, you know, I know he's expensive. He's pretty penny. But, you know, if you're going to make a Castello deck, I definitely recommend that you run two. Because he can win games. You know? There's been a handful of times in Duel where I just drop a guy a charger on a token player and just go, mmm, mow it down, mow it down. Uh, Volcasaurus. You know, you can't have, you can't have a rank 5 deck. You can't have a rank 5 deck without at least one Volcasaurus. Um, I like running two, but I don't have room in this deck, but I like two. There's been plenty of Duel where I run with two Volcasaurus, you know. You know, they see you doing rank 5s, they see you running a stellar deck, they expect you to at least run one and blow it up, and they're like, okay, well, at least that's out of the way, but then you whip out a second one, and they're just like, oh, shit, you know, that somewhere in their mind, they just think, like, no one runs more than one, no one runs more than one, Volcasaurus is limited to one, no, it's not, so, I like to run two, uh, you know, you blow up your opponent's monster, they take the damage, he can't attack directly, uh, the turn he uses his effect, but there's a kind of a loophole in which you can just put the guy to charge around on top of him, and then attack directly with that. So, um, you know, if you blow up the right monster and attack your opponent directly, um, you know, you could take out over half your opponent's life points. So, uh, definitely, if you're going to do a rank 5 spam deck or any deck that can make rank 5s, the first guy you should look to, Focusaurus. And we run Tyrus. Tyrus is awesome. I fell in love with him, no homo. Um, you know, uh, there's been plenty of times where my opponent would have, like, a bottomless or like a mirror force and or torrento and i'm just like tyrus and they're just like no and i just go tyrus attack bam shield bash and then just slash and cut your uh back row you know and tyrus has just been very helpful it's been working a lot for me lately it's also a light so you you know that's actually happened to me i th believe it's actually in one of the daily duels uh i think it was utopia earlier this week where I was using, yeah, it was tagging with Tygo, where I summoned out a Tyrus, and I attacked, and he tried to lance me, and I went honest, and I was just so strong, and I killed him, and it was just great. So, I uh, definitely recommend that you run Tyrus. Tyrus is actually one of my favorite rank 5s. You run Shark Fortress. I know, look at that cheap price. Why are you running a 5 cent card? Shark Fortress is awesome. I do not know why this card is a common. It should have been like a super rare, at minimum. Uh, it's two level fives. So your opponent can't attack any other monsters except for this one. He's only 24, so he's an attack bearer. Um, you know, it'd be kind of cheap if it was actually 25, because then you could go with Eradicator. But uh, that was another story. That's another story. If you need to do that, go into Adrius or Crazy Box. Uh, but the thing that really makes him good is that once per turn, you can target one. I mean, you can attach XC material to target one face up monster you control, and it can make a second attack during each of the battle phases of your turn. You only have one battle phase. I don't know why they worded it like that, whatever. It's kind of weird. But the reason why you run Shark Fortress is because you have an OTK. Alright, let's say you have a Pleadies on the field. Your opponent's field is clear. You make another, and you can go for another rank 5. So you go for another rank 5 through Insta Fusion, through Ghost Ship, through Pollux Calls, through whatever. Just make another rank 5. And go into Shark Fortress. Then turn that Pleiades into an M7. Detach, allowing the M7 to attack twice. And then after that, you take the Shark Fortress and you Chaos XZ overlaying a Shark Fortress. I mean, not Shark Fortress, a guy charger on top of it. Attack your opponent directly. 27. 27. That's 54. 26. Add that all together. 8,000. GG. Perfect. Clean. OTK. There you go. So, definitely. If you're not running Shark Fortress already, that should be incentive enough to run Shark Fortress. I've won tons of games. Look at Daily Duels. Look at the Castello. I've won tons of games doing this exact play. So, I definitely recommend that you run Shark Fortress. And that's another reason why I run two God Chargers for this OTK. And if it doesn't go through, then I can still do a, a God Charger with the Volcasaurus. Or whatever. Or drop it on Terrace. Or whatever. Um... Uh, 
run Paladomno. Paladomno is awesome. Uh, he's definitely uh, a lightsaber with two level four lights. With this deck having a lot of four level four lights, uh, you attach one. You attach both things. I'm about to say one. I'm so used to saying one. Attach both the XC materials. Target uh, face up monster your opponent controls and attack becomes zero. And if its attack does go to zero, its effect is negated. And then you. And then, just to top it off, make a, put a cherry on top of this card. When this card is destroyed by your opponent's card effects, either by battle or by card effect. Destroyed by your opponent's cards. By battle or by card effect. And since it's a graveyard, draw a card. There is no bad thing about this card. There's no drawback. There's no nothing. You know? There's just, bam, Paladin now. So good. It's great. You should run one. It's awesome. It's been... It saved me a ton of times. I've killed Draco Sacks. I've killed Maestrooks. I've killed Zenman with this guy. And when this guy dies, draw a card? Come on, guys. You can't get... Well, you can't get better than this. But, you know, this guy is just good. There's no negative about it. You can't sit here and argue and tell me why you shouldn't pay Pallet Domino when you have level 4 lights. So, there you go. And, of course, the last card, you got to run your Dominates for your Ring Class fam. That's simple as that. You don't even use them for his effect. And actually, his effect is kind of a nuisance. You know, especially in Death Pro, they're like, hey, select the card zone. I was like, I don't want to. He's not going to be on the field long enough for me to be able to really care about that. Alright, guys, so this was the deck profile for the Constellar Rank 5 spam deck. So I hope you guys enjoy Constellar's Undaily Duels. It's been a fun time. I've won plenty of duels. I've lost plenty of duels. I've gotten better with the deck. The deck has helped me make my real life Constellar deck, and I really appreciate this deck. So, you know, uh, give it a try yourself. Um, you know, it's just a fun deck. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, deck profile. Um, it's going to be missed on daily duels. But, uh, you know, all things, good things got to come to an end. So, uh, tomorrow is the big update. So, I hope you guys are ready. Uh, you know, I've been really looking forward to it. been working really hard for it. And I hope you guys are satisfied with the results. So thank you guys for watching, thank you guys for all the support, and I will see you guys tomorrow with... Okay, forget it. You watched it all the way to the end. Dragons won. Dragons are definitely in the new lineup, so see you guys tomorrow with Dragons. You know, this is your last chance, guys. You got till midnight to go ahead and click the link. It'll be the last 15 seconds of the video. It'll be the link in the description. Last, last, you got till midnight to vote. And say what decks you want to because we could make a quick change, you know? You know? So, go voice your opinion, because it's almost over. You know? At midnight, it's over. So, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. And I will see you guys tomorrow with Dragons.